Oliver Stone is with us, the three-time Academy Award-winning director and screenwriter of numerous films, including Midnight Express, Platoon, Born on the Fourth of July, and now his latest documentary, South of the Border. The website is southoftheborder.com. And Oliver Stone, w- welcome to the program. Thank you, Tom. You, sir, have created uh, some brilliant movies and provided me with a lot of entertainment and thought-provoking uh, times over my life. Tell Thank us you. about South of the Border. Uh, South of the Border was a uh, road trip we took through South America. We uh, had access. Uh, Hugo Chavez said, come on down, talk to us, and we did. And he said, don't believe what I'm saying. Go out there and see my neighbors. And then we went to six other countries, met seven other presidents, and they told us pretty much a story about change and reform, social reform, transformation in their region, and how the United States was threatening that, and they wanted their independence. From from uh, what I see of the press stuff on this movie, uh, Hugo Chavez in Venezuela, Evo Morales in Bolivia, yeah. uh, Lula de Silva in Brazil, uh, Cristina Kirchner in Argentina, uh, Fernando Lugo in Paraguay, Rafael Correa in uh, Ecuador, and, and Raul Castro, of all people, in Cuba. Yeah. You you uh, talked with all of these people, and you say if i'm if i'm I, I, unfortunately i haven't seen the movie yet i'm oh, really looking forward okay. to it but you, if the press you know releases and and reviews them get you say that there's a revolution going on or has already happened and is continuing to go on in south america that's getting no press in the united states <laughs> and pretty much no press anywhere else in the world what is that well i tell you you know it's it's a, it's it is a strange story it's a missile shield kind of to, defense we have against hearing this, but there's been going on for 10 years. The economic facts and figures bear it out. The World Bank bears it out. The, these people, democratically elected, have taken control in their countries, democratically elected, and pushed for change, use change. I wouldn't say revolution as much as a strong evolution. And they're all facing resistance from their local press. Their local press is worse than Fox News on, on steroids here. Yeah. Their local press is, run, is small. It's owned by uh, private by private people, television, print, attacking all the time. And that's the story you get outside. And the New York Times and all the liberal, so-called liberal media, Washington Post have been some of the worst offenders against the truth in this matter. Not just the joke stations like uh, Fox News, which you know completely distort the truth and make fun of it like they keep doing. But the point is, it, it's even seen into Europe. Europe is more moderate. I'm going over there to England. We're going to open in 30 countries. I'm going to England and fight the good fight. You know, try mm-hmm. to. I think the truth will out eventually. And uh, you know, these people are all facing democratic elections, and they are always under pressure. We, the these these countries. We're talking with Oliver Stone. His new movie, South of the Border, South of the Border Doc dot com is doc, doc, yeah, doc, doc, I know it's confusing. Doc, doc, yeah, thank you. As in doc There's a lot of information there, but yeah, way. south of the border doc dot com and uh, in arguably and and correct me if I'm wrong on this but it's it's uh, well in fact you know g- give me a reality check here arguably it seems that these south of the border countries that have become quote socialist or democratic socialist let's say right are not that different in terms of governance and 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 fiscal policy you know basically tax, taxing the rich and providing a social safety net for the poor from Norway, Denmark, Sweden, from the the Scandinavian countries. And yet in the Scandinavian countries, you know, there is a right-wing press, but there's nothing like the kind of, you know, just incredibly brutal attacks that these so-called socialists in the southern hemisphere are getting. Right. Is that because in in Scandinavia the the populace and and the right wingers and the power brokers have just basically given up and they've said okay the people are are with this and we're not going to pick on it anymore and in South America they still think that there's a chance that they can pull off another coup like I was actually in Venezuela the first time that they right. they uh, they threw uh, Hugo Chavez out back right. back at, uh, more than a decade right. ago well you're talking about completely different systems I mean the Scandinavia the whole European experience since World War II was con- you know bec- where they fell between uh, Soviet uh, Union communism and the United States capitalism and they were looking for a middle ground. It's, it's a whole different system. In Scandinavia, you do have a left-wing press. You don't really have one in South America. It's privately owned. The governments of these countries are trying to get a public station. They put them on the air. They have two, two, uh, two public stage TV stations in Venezuela out of 48. <laughs> uh, in Argentina, Kirchner has just tried to uh, pass a law, but it's under appeal called the media law, trying to break up the media monopolies. So that's, that's a fact check. do that here. And number two, it, it doesn't have the... It isn't a tax the rich system. I'm, uh, it's they're fighting to get the the resources. They're all very rich countries with oil, gas, 
uh, minerals. They're trying to get those resources, those profits, not going out to multinational corporations, but trying to get control of them for the per- profits of their own people. Like Norway did with their oil. Uh, I don't know the story of Norway, but... I believe so. Yeah. I, I believe that the, the, the oil in Venezuela, for example, was nationalized in the 70s, but a corrupt class you know, grew up around it, and they stole all the money. Now uh, he's trying, and it's very difficult, by the way, to, to run a country. You don't, you don't do this by fiat. You take over, and you do it democratically, and you have, you're fought all along the way. But basically, corruption is a big problem in every single country. I'm not going to deny that Venezuela, Argentina, they all have huge problems because of the tradition of, of corruption going back to Spanish yeah, well, we have a corruption problem here. Yeah, we sure do. But, and we <laughs> should look to Latin America because they, the Argentina economy, the, the Venezuelan economy, they do have solutions for us where we can move. We are moving anyway into a semi-socialist situation in the United yeah. States. With this, you can feel it all. You know, you feel it the way where the government's moving and putting money into too big to fail stuff. So I think there is a we should t- we should be talking with our neighbors and and learning together on how to deal yeah. with these situations. I was in Argentina in 2000 as it was falling apart. Yes, I was, you know, and you know who saved the situation was the Kirchner people. Yeah, they exactly. came in and they rever- the, the un- International Monetary Fund, which is also featured in the in the film. I hope you mentioned that. You know, mm-hmm. they have been a very negative influence for the last 20 years in South America since Reagan, and now they got rid of them. For most of the, the 20 billion dollars in loans became 1 billion dollars in loans through the years. Right. The Kirshner said no to the IMF, kicked him out. So did Lula in Brazil. And this is a big victory. To what extent is uh, Hugo Chavez's um, idiosyncratic personality, his multi-hour <coughs> TV rants, uh, the, <laughs> the, 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 you know, uh, his yeah. uh, statements before the UN, to what extent is that something that actually plays well with his base in his country, or is that just yeah. him being a little weird? I mean, it, no, I think it, it's, it's take on nature. that cartoon yeah. character that we see of him. Well, it's the nature of, you know, he doesn't have, uh, he does, his, his argument would be, look, uh, we, I have to get on the public airways because no, but I can never get any time on the private media. They're always attacking. So it mm-hmm. is a partly defensive and over-defensive, absolutely. And then number two, you know, his style is definitely macho, and it does offend, I think. I, I keep saying to people, I think if you look like Woody Allen or Salvador Allende, he'd be much more acceptable in the United States. The fact is that he's a blunt man, and he's an ex-soldier, and he seems like a tough guy. And he is tough, but you know, he's completely democratic. Democratic. And the third thing, I just correct one little thing you said. Noam Chomsky wrote very beautifully about it. And those people who were at the United Nations that day who saw him speak, he had the longest applause of any international leader uh, when he came to the podium. Oh, yeah. That absolutely. is to say, he was the most respected. In the way the American press pictured it, he's a buffoon, a clown. It's an amazing turnaround of right. the truth. A, a, a quick question. One of our callers earlier, I mentioned you were going to be on the program, and one of our callers said, the phrase "the beast" is a recurring theme in many of your movies. Can Which you speak is to that? What the, is it? This concept of the beast, the kind of oh, under the beast, yeah. belly of society. <laughs> that was a terminology I used in Nixon, I believe. Yeah, yeah, the beast. Uh, I, the beast, uh, I forgot where it came from, my, my imagination, I read about it. You know, the beast uh-huh. is something, a mechanism inside our system. Uh, call it uh, capitalism, call it social control, call it fear, uh, where it drives this country constantly and turns over and no one can get in its way, whether it's a president or a filmmaker or, a, uh, or another country. Uh, it, it seems to be a self-perpetuating mechanism that it devours and, and, and is extremely violent. Yeah. We're talking with Oliver Stone, the filmmaker, and, and his, his new documentary, southoftheborderdoc.com. Oliver Stone, I wish you Thank all you the John. very best on this. Thanks Thank so much, much for being with us today.